Ladies and gentlemen, Redis Geeks and Gigettes, welcome to Redis Day. Shani. In the past two years, I have been working for Aluma. Aluma is a data pipeline company. We will see it in a minute. Today, we are going to talk how about how Aluma uses Redis for schema detection. So let's start. So first, let's understand what am I going to talk about. So what is Aluma? Aluma is a data pipeline. It's a service. It means we are taking many data sources for our customers, and we want to move them all to one data warehouse. Main goal is usually analytics. So this is the main world that we are going to talk about. One part of this, like this is a big challenge. Yeah, it should be high scale, and it has many challenges. The challenge we are going to talk about today is a small part. One of the things we need to do in order to take many sources and move them to one is convert them all to the output acceptable types. What do I mean? Like if we say we are copying MySQL to Redshift, <laughs> the types that MySQL support are not exactly what Redshift supports. And if we want to copy a click story, then it doesn't have types, we need to detect types. So today, we're going to focus on what do we do when we want to copy a source that has no types. What can it be? Why don't I see the title? Oh, it opened with, never mind. Okay, so the challenge is to copy all data types from all types and specifically today, the one that has no schema, like some apps data, click story, webhooks, CSV lines, mm -hmm. and one naive solution, which is obviously not good enough, is to just say, if we don't know the type, let's just look at it as text. Like on the web, it's text, so we just use text. This solution is obviously not good enough, because if we want to do analytics on top of our output, then we need a more verbose language. And if it's it, integer, we want it to be integer. And if it's timestamp, we want it to be timestamp so we can do more rich queries and use it more efficiently and store it more efficiently. So this is the basic problem. And let's see how we solve this. OK, so basically, before we're gonna talk about real time and scale, the solution we offer is fairly simple. We just say, let's look at the data that we are collecting. Let's collect samples and then look at the samples. Let's start by, with the most specific type. Let's start with timestamp. If all the samples we have, we, are, we can successfully convert them to timestamp, then we will treat the numbers as timestamp. If we have enough sample, then we have enough confidence that this is the real type of this field. If timestamp didn't work, let's try integer. If integer didn't work, let's try big integer. If this one didn't work, let's try float. Eventually, if none of them worked, which means that maybe some were successfully converted and some were not, then we're gonna use strings. Another option is to check Booleans. Booleans can be true and false and can be zero or one. So it overlaps to numbers, but it also allows some strings, like true and false. So we can also try this. So we're gonna start with timestamp, then integer, then big integer, then float, then Boolean, and if none of this worked, then we're gonna do a fallback to string. Any question on this simple solution? Okay, so what do we need in order to achieve this? We need samples, and we just need to test them. 
sounds easy. So where does Redis comes in? The next challenge is that it's not an offline, offline procedure. It's something that should happen in real time. I mean, we collect data in real time, and sometimes we have new fields, and we get new data sources, and all of this process should be really quick and fast. Okay, so, ah, oh, I forgot to mention this, I'm sorry. So we're gonna change, we have the type statistics, and after we have the type statistic, we can convert them. The last point that mentions here, then we have some selection. Like we can say we want to be 100% sure, then only if all the samples we have fit these types, we can, we will choose it. We can also be to allow some error and say that 90% fit is good enough. Like 5% may be some noise or some bad data. So we can allow some error. So I'm gonna conclude because I did a bit of mess. We're gonna try all types. After we will have all types, we will build the full statistic for each field. After we have the full statistic, we can choose how to work. Maybe we want 100% to be sure, and maybe we can allow some errors. So this is the basic problem set. Next challenge I already started to mention was the fact that all of this should be in high scale and in real time. Actually, we in Aluma has <coughs> has a distribute, distributed system. We use, currently we use Term. We are moving now to Kafka Stream. But anyway, it will be a distribute, distributed system working in real time. And the requirement is to do all of this really fast and quick. This is where Redis comes in. So we require something that, okay, I'll, what do we need? So we need something to store the statistic because we want to do it real time. We can't use database because it's too slow. So in-memory database is a perfect fit. First reason Redis is, is a good fit for this problem. Second, we want something to act like database. And also Redis is a good fit because Redis has many types. It has hash, it has set, it has a rich language who can really help us. So the solution we chose was to use the Redis cluster. This will ensure high performance, which was the main requirement. It will also, it's a cluster, so it will be highly available. It's a key value store, as I mentioned before, it is, and it has rich types. So really sound like a perfect fit for this problem. So what are we doing? We have real-time data streams, and data is coming in, and on every sample coming in, we should update the statistics. So on every sample coming in, we check all the types we saw before. And for each field, in the data that got in, we update the previous statistics. This is how now when data comes in, in this time we store the statistics. We need to store them in Redis. Actually, we can do it every event and we can also do it like in micro batches. So we do a bit less. So on every micro batch, we take the data we had update date and restore it. We have a distributed system, so all machines will update the same place in Redis. So now, as data comes in, we store the data, and after we have enough data, let's say 100 samples, or maybe five minutes, or maybe what's come faster, then we have the data to make a smarter decision. So how does it work in our system? In our system, 
what's happened is that we store the data in Redis in real time, and then every minute there is a, a service called Autom Automapper, and this service checks the statistics. If it has enough data or enough time has passed to say this is the low data we will work with this one, then it takes the statistics and it converts them to full output schema. We require 100% fit and because this is not all the data, we wait for a small amount of, of data. So we require 100% fit and after we have it, we choose the schema and once chosen, data can be streamed in real time into the outputs. Actually, this is it, just our little story with Redis.